Speaks. 11 Live News at 11.30 a.m. begins with breaking news. The city of Atlanta just announcing that Police Chief Rodney Bryant will retire after 34 years with the department. It is the breaking news we are following for you right now. This comes amid rising crime across the city of Atlanta, where questions loomed over whether or not Bryant will still have a job once the mayor's first 100 days in office ended. Just 24 hours ago, the chief appeared with Mayor Andre Dickens, announcing the arrest of dozens of fugitives and the latest on the department's efforts to crack down on crime. Chief Bryant stepped in as the city's top cop when former Chief Erica Shields abruptly resigned in the summer of 2020. He was officially named the department's 25th chief about a year later. In today's statement, Mayor Andre Dickens expressed gratitude for Bryant agreeing to stay on for his first 100 days as mayor, saying he has already grown to rely on the chief's council. There will now be a national search for a permanent replacement. And we are following more breaking news coming into the newsroom at this hour. Atlanta police now giving the all clear at Hartsville Jackson International Airport. After crews learned of a suspicious package in the South Terminal, there was a partial evacuation after canines alerted crews to that bag they thought was suspicious. Fortunately, it was not. This comes during a busy holiday weekend at the airport. The south end of the airport was closed for a brief period. Atlanta police are trying to piece together what happened to a man who was found shot dead inside of a car. This happened at the Donnelly apartment homes in southwest Atlanta. 11 Alive's Karis Belger has been following this story all morning for us. Karis, what can you tell us this midday? Now, good morning. So I've actually been talking to people who live in this community, who live in the apartments behind me and who are living in the neighboring buildings. They all say this is something that they never expected. And in fact, they were shocked when they saw it this morning. And I'll step out of the way and show you one thing here. So you see this gate here where all that damage is. It's kind of bent in. That is where the car was earlier this morning. And that is where police were focusing their efforts since the very early hours. The, check out some of this footage from earlier this morning. It shows police working on the crime scene, the APD homicide commander told us they got the call around 4 30 this morning and when they got there they found a boy found a body excuse me with a gunshot wound inside and police have not been able to identify who that person is yet but we're told it is a male who was in his 30s here's something else the police believe there was a passenger inside of the car but that person was gone when they got here right now they're relying on security footage and whatever evidence they were able to pick up so they can try and piece this all together but for the folks who live in this community. This is all coming as a shock. Nothing like that really goes. I've been over here a couple years and this is completely out the norm to me. Uh, we are a close tight knit community over here. So like I said, I don't even recognize that car. Like, so I don't even think it's nobody. It'll be it's something for me to see. So this is in the very early stages of this investigation. Police still trying to piece things together. And in, in addition to the evidence they picked up at the scene, they're also trying to piece together what they heard from neighbors to try and get a sense of what exactly happened. And of course, they are trying to see if there was, in fact, a passenger and locate that person to help with their investigation. All right, Karis, thank you. The attorneys for a man shot and paralyzed by East Point police officers in 2018 are releasing video of the shooting they say has never been seen in the public eye until now. Leading up to the shooting, Devin Nolly was being chased by the officers in his car on I-285 until they used a pit maneuver to stop him. You see that right there. Nolly's attorney says dash cam video shows the officers start to shoot at him seven seconds after the crash as he was running away into a wooded area near the interstate. And at that point in time, he had been shot twice in the back. One specifically in his upper mid back, one specifically in his gluteal area, and two to the back of his thigh. These are all back to front, and at no point in time was Devin ever armed. And at this point, Mr. Nolly is a quadriplegic, and this should not have happened. The former East Point officers face aggravated assault charges in the case after being indicted by a grand jury just a week ago. An attorney for one of the officers says their use of force was justified. Nolly is also suing for $30 million. 
A man wrongfully accused of shooting an officer is out of jail and now looking for an apology. Arterio Crumbly spoke exclusively with 11 Alive's Hope Ford hours before he planned to speak with reporters today. Clayton County police arrested him after they say multiple witnesses wrongfully identified him as a suspect in a robbery and shooting. He was locked up for six weeks. Police are now looking for a new suspect. This person, Charles Payne. My girl just showed me the picture of him. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm from the neighborhood, but how y'all getting me mixed up with him? I want an apology and I'm going to sue them. Crombie says he does plan to head to the police department today to get his phone. Well, enjoy the sunny skies to end your weekend cruise into the weekend because we got some rain coming for Easter weekend, Chesley. Yeah, you can't tell it right now. When you look outside, it looks so perfect out there. We do have some high thin clouds around, but that's it. You can see the sun shining down on Cobb County. This is the Cloverleaf, right? Where 75 and I-285 meet. Traffic seems to be getting along pretty good and the skies are beautiful. So yeah, shades for today, but tomorrow a little different story. Yeah, got some rain that's gonna be coming our way, especially by tomorrow morning. The clouds will start to fill in and I think it will remain cloudy, even though the rain will be during the morning. It'll remain cloudy through the day on Saturday, even on Sunday. We're still looking at a chance for some showers around, but right now we get to enjoy the sun. Temperatures are in the 60s just about everywhere you look a little better afternoon after a start in the low 40s for a lot of areas. So we started out on the cool side. You can now take off that jacket or light sweater that you wore this morning. You'll be fine this afternoon. A bit breezy as well, so it will feel nice and comfortable. Temperature, temperature is getting up to about uh, 77 degrees for an afternoon high. Will remain sunny all day long, down to 74 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight. And then that rain comes our way, folks. You'll see the clouds increasing through the overnight, and I think that rain gets in here by tomorrow morning. Could be some very heavy rain, a couple of thunderstorms embedded in that. Any severe weather? I'll let you know in the full forecast coming up. Aisha, back to you. All right, we'll see you soon, Chesley. Thank you. Supply chain shortages are creating a crisis situation in Georgia. That's according to Governor Brian Kemp. He just signed a new emergency declaration to try to fix some of these issues and maybe even bring down prices on gas and groceries for you at home. The executive order focuses mainly on gas and the trucking industry. It outlaws price gouging for fuel and suspends any rule that limit the hours truck drivers are able to work so they can keep moving those goods. However, it does say truck drivers should not work while sick or tired and orders drivers to be given 10 consecutive hours off before they go back to work. The state of emergency goes into effect this Saturday and will expire in 30 days unless the governor decides to extend the order. A new report out this week finds inflation jump to highs that we haven't seen in 40 years. Are these costs here to stay? You ask and we verify. A viewer wants to know if we'll be feeling the impact of inflation for the rest of the year. I'm hopeful. I think things are going to change around for better. For the next year, I'll sink it down. Well, let's verify. Our sources are Tom Smith, economic professor at Emory University, and the Federal Reserve Chairman, Jerome Powell. Inflation, in a nutshell, is a continued increase in the price of goods and services with a decrease of purchasing <laughs> power. Right now, the average price we pay for almost everything is at a 40-year high. Gross. The rate of prices rising is ballooned to more than 8%. It's been hard to make the money that I used to make. That's because more people are now demanding those goods and services, which drives up the cost. But your income stays about the same, which means you're not getting as much bang for your buck. We're arguing about having to spend too much money. It, it is what it is. You just got to spend it. You don't go out to eat as much. Looking at your economic crystal ball, where are we headed with all of this? Inflation. Inflation. Professor Tom Smith at Emory University says he's very hopeful inflation will get under control in the coming months. He believes the Federal Reserve Board is making the right moves, such as increasing interest rates on certain loans, to name a few, to get us from more than 8% right now to where we need to be at about 2%. We understand that high inflation imposes significant hardship. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell believes that we will see inflation deflate this year. Like most forecasters, we continue to expect inflation to decline over the course of the year. I have a lot of trust in that. The professor is optimistic. I am encouraged that our Federal Reserve Board is engaging in policies that make sense. This is what they've trained their entire lives to do, to make sure that our economy is going to be well taken care of. Going forward. We are where Atlanta speaks, and your neighbors are chiming in. I'm not going to worry. At the end of the day, you know, I know that it's going to be okay. So we can verify, according to the Federal Reserve Board Chairman and Professor Smith, this high Inflation is here for now, but steps are being taken to bring it down by the end of the year.
If you hear or see something online you want us to verify, you can send us an email or text that number right on your screen. Use the word verify. A judge has now denied a request from Stacey Abrams to use the same fundraising law that benefits Governor Brian Kemp. This means the Abrams campaign has a limit to how much money a single donor can contribute until she formally wins the Democratic nomination. Abrams filed a lawsuit earlier this year, arguing that a state law gave current governor a fundraising advantage. The judge says the court cannot rewrite the law to declare Abrams the nominee. Abrams was asking one to declare the law unconstitutional and then also uh, to allow her leadership organization uh, to raise unlimited funds during the period. So it's either wrong and nobody should do it or uh, you want to ask for this to be waived for you. Former Senator David Perdue also challenged the law. In that case, the judge ruled Governor Kemp could not use those funds against Perdue in the primary. Today marks 75 years since Jackie Robinson broke Major League Baseball's color barrier by playing in a game for the Brooklyn Dodgers. The Braves will join all Major League teams today by wearing the number 42 on their jerseys, of course, which was Robinson's number. The Braves will also host a celebration at the Jackie Robinson Boys and Girls Club in Cairo, where Robinson was born. The World Series trophy will also be there. We're all feeling it. Inflation is making your daily life so expensive. But how long is this going to impact your wallet? We verify next. In you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but... Is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify, where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark. We see people getting famous on social media for all kinds of things like comedy, singing, TikTok dances. But 22 year old Justin Keith has become a hit online for telling the stories of Atlanta's homeless. Now with more than a million followers, his full time job is giving them a voice and in some cases a new life. Are you homeless by chance? Yeah. How long you been homeless? Is that? Oh. Yeah. 
At 22 years old, Justin Keith wakes up every day with a mission, giving a voice to Atlanta's homeless. It's because driving by the homeless, you'll look at them and be like, I wonder what happened or how did they get here? So Justin uses his social media platforms under the name Glow Jades to interview homeless people. So what brought you to Atlanta? He offers money, a meal, and an ear to listen. Mr. Warren is one of those willing to talk. My family was here. I was going to visit. I came out of prison. Mr. Warren's daughter was killed a week after he arrived in Atlanta. Unable to cope with grief, Mr. Warren was in a mental health crisis when he met Justin. He says no one ever stopped to show they cared. So it's only been four months since your first video. How has life changed for you? It's honestly changed my life in a lot of different ways. I mean, first, getting to help people. I love helping people. I've always been a, a giver. So now being able to really give to people full time is just like, it, it's crazy. In the Inspired by his impact, Glow Jays oh, yeah, and his yeah. photographer Oz started posting more, growing to more than a million followers between Instagram and TikTok. He was even able to quit his job. So I get a lot of brand deals now, like brands actually pay me to wear their clothing. I have my view revenue, of course. More money and more time to give. After hearing Mr. Warren's story, he spent the next month helping him go from homeless to housed. As y'all can see behind me, it looks like I'm at an apartment complex, don't it? What that mean? You got a crib, not us. Man, that means I can take a hot shower, warm bed, a new beginning. Thanks to you, and thanks to my viewers, man, and thanks to God. And Justin has actually helped three people get homes, and he has now started a nonprofit under the name Glow Jays brand as well. He says he wants to take his projects to the next level by turning his videos into a documentary, and no doubt, I know he's going to do it. Awesome, awesome work from that young man, Chesley. Absolutely, yes. Need more like them. Need more like them. All right, we're looking at uh, fair skies on the outside. It looks gorgeous out there. Please, folks, take advantage of this one because changes are coming our way for the holiday weekend. Wish the whole weekend could stay this way, but unfortunately it's not going to. Temperatures are in the 60s just about everywhere you look to the far south. We got some 70s down there. Let's zoom in a little bit here. You got some 70s over in Stockbridge, so northern parts of Henry County, over toward Forest Park as well. In Clayton County, got 72 degrees there. 68 in Noonan, Chattahoochee Hills the same. Fayette, Fayette the same. Fayetteville the same. Fayette County. <laughs> Looking at temperatures in the 60s, mid 60s over toward Powder Springs and Mableton and Cobb County. 65 degrees also in Douglasville. 69 in Temple, up in northern Carroll County, 70 in downtown Atlanta right now and over toward Carrollton. Tucker, you're at 67 degrees on your way to the 70s. We'll all be up there uh, for this afternoon. I'm thinking upper 70s for the afternoon high. Quite comfortable out there with a nice little breeze coming our way out of the east right now. So high pressure continues to slide over toward the east. We'll get back into a southeasterly flow once we get into the late afternoon and into the evening. And our clouds will begin to build, but not until after the sun sets today. So we have a full day with sunshine around and nice temperatures. Comfortable on the outside, I like to call it. Very, very nice. We'll take that. Uh, we'll be watching, though, back off to the west of us to see uh, if thunderstorms start to develop. That'll be just to the east of Oklahoma City. You can see that uh, dark green shade that extends over into Alabama. Now, it will come our way uh, by tomorrow. But notice south of I-20 is where we have a marginal threat for severe weather. Got a front that's going to be dropping in. It's going to bring us the rain. I'm thinking early on Saturday. So if you're getting up early, maybe to walk the dog, got a yard sale, or maybe even an Easter egg hunt. Well, note that the rain will be around, and I think it will be with us at least through about 11 o'clock in the morning before things begin to subside. We'll hold on to the clouds and maybe a scattered or isolated shower through the rest of the afternoon. Again, the severe threat is just to the south of us. That marginal threat means an isolated severe thunderstorm is possible. That's closer toward the Macon area. Here's how it all plays out for us in the forecast track model. You can follow along with the time right there at the top of the screen. Shows the fair skies around for the rest of the afternoon. And notice after the sun sets, when some clouds will start to fill in here, we stopped it by 830. Uh, we'll wind up with mostly cloudy skies through the overnight. Tomorrow morning, if you're not waking up early, you may be awakened by some of this heavy rain that's going to be on top of us. A couple embedded thunderstorms here, but again, the Storm Prediction Center saying uh, they're not looking for anything severe until it gets to mount to the south of us. They'll have a little bit more in the way of heating in the central and southern portions of the state. For us, just the heavy rain around. Some of those thunderstorms could pack some gusty winds with it, so we'll watch out for that. After about 9, 10 o'clock, that all fades down to the south. We'll have some lingering showers left over. This is my 11:15. Uh, so most of the Easter egg hunts probably kicking off around 10 o'clock or noon. 
Well, the grass will be wet, so don't hide them there. At least it starts to get a little drier once we get toward the latter half of the afternoon and notice the skies begin to clear out as well as we head into the evening. So we'll have a mostly cloudy day. Wake it up on Sunday for early morning service. Stop the clock here at 630 AM. We get a little bit of sunshine. We'll call it partly sunny skies. Don't get used to that. Clouds will roll right back in. Mostly cloudy skies by the time we get to noon. We'll have a chance for a few isolated showers, but some of those heavier downpours will start to get in here uh, once we get toward the evening. I'm thinking after 5 PM is when we'll start to see some scattered showers and uh, thunderstorms around. That's going to linger into Monday and then we'll finally start to clear it out by Monday. So here's a better look at your Easter weekend outlook. Scatter showers, thunderstorms around early on Saturday by the afternoon. Mostly cloudy skies. 74 degrees will be your afternoon high temperature. We're looking at the rain coming back to us late in the day on Sunday. I'm thinking again after 5 o'clock. So your sunrise service should be OK. And anything that you do by early afternoon, 73 degrees will be the forecast high temperature. Rain sticks around for your Monday. Got a 50% chance for now. 68 for the high temperature on Monday. So slightly cooler to begin the work week. Tuesday right at 70 after a 50 degree start. We'll have mostly sunny skies. Then we turn on the 11s. Look at this 73 degrees for the high temperature on Wednesday under mostly sunny skies. And then by Thursday, the clouds start to build back in and temperatures start to heat up a little bit into the mid to upper 70s by then. Aisha, back to you. Giving birth can be one of the most joyous moments of a parent's life, but childbirth for some black women can be deadly. Just ahead, a mother recounts her traumatic experience. Track severe storms. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify, where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's just my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News. Stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify. Where you know what's fact and... Did you know black women are three times more likely to die from complications linked to childbirth? For the women who suffer, this is more than a number. I spoke to one woman who was looking back on her nightmare delivery room experience while getting ready to welcome baby number four. 
as a black woman, what was your labor and delivery experience? Uh, it was very traumatic. It was very traumatic for me. I think because I didn't know how to advocate for myself. And so I was expecting those who were, you know, the, the medical professionals to do the right thing. And um, to me, that didn't happen. I went through the laboring process for about five hours, contractions nonstop. And then I also have the huge blood clot that I passed and the doctor never came in to check on me to see what's going on. And then finally, when I was ready to deliver, um, everybody rushed in. Um, I was able to su successfully have my son. And then after that, I just started seeing TV static, like literally everything was fading to black. That evening, I should have had a blood transfusion performed and not until the next morning did the doctor say, oh, you know, let's go ahead and get this done. And she forgot to sign the paperwork. So I waited 12 hours to get a blood transfusion and therefore I couldn't hold my child. My husband had to do the diaper changes. I couldn't bathe myself. Did you ever get any answers? No, the doctor who um, delivered my baby never came to see me that evening afterwards. Did you switch to a black OBGYN? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. We um, have more of a bond with each other. I feel like I can, you know, talk to her about anything that's going on with myself and that she's actually listening to me and that she knows exactly what kind of care that I need as a black woman, you know, whether or not I need to take a baby aspirin, you know, because of preeclampsia, because we're more prone to high blood pressure. Well, how far along are you this time? I am 17 weeks and this was a surprise. I'm going to be 42 when this baby's born. <laughs> so, wow. Yes. Well, we wish you the best of luck on baby surprise number four. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. We're wrapping up Black Maternal Health Week, but 11 Alive continues to be committed to shining a spotlight on the racial disparities in childbirth and how to make it better. On 11alive.com slash Mothers Matter, you can watch our entire docuseries and find resources for families, mothers, and medical providers ready to take action. It all started with a mustard seed. Next in our Voices for Equality series, a young Georgia farmer is being honored by the Obamas for reaping good fruit. Day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now... Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m., where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify. Where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. 
He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that like he was love every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news at a... my garden. <laughs> I love, love it. Do you remember that little spunky one? We first introduced you to Kendall Ray Johnson last fall. That's when she was honored for becoming Georgia's youngest certified farmer. And today on National Gardening Day, the six year old was honored with the post by Michelle Obama. The post said how proud the former first lady was of Kendall for starting her own farming business and getting other young people involved. And though Kendall may not understand the impact of the post, her mother Ursula Johnson says the Obama's post was a huge moment for all of them. We screamed, hollered, and just was filled with joy. And I think when she gets a little older and she kind of put the pieces together and the pieces the, the, the pieces start to pit, uh, um, fit in the puzzle, I think she's going to say, wow, I did that. And the fruit just keeps on multiplying for Miss Kendall. We're told two agriculture leaders from Washington, D.C. will come garden with her for Earth Day next Friday. 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 11 Alive News at noon starts now. The city of Atlanta just announcing that police chief Rodney Bryant will retire after 34 years with the department. It's the breaking news we are following for you right now. This comes amid rising crime across the city of Atlanta, where questions loomed over whether or not Bryant would still have a job once the mayor's first 100 days in office ended. Just 24 hours ago, the chief appeared with Mayor Andre Dickens announcing the arrest of dozens of fugitives and the latest on the department's efforts to crack down on crime. Chief Bryant stepped in as, a, as the city's top cop when former Chief Erica Shields abruptly resigned in the summer of 2020. He was officially named the department's 25th chief about a year later. In today's statement, Mayor Andre Dickens expressed gratitude for Bryant agreeing to stay on for his first 100 days as mayor, saying he has grown to rely on the chief's counsel. There will now be a national search for a permanent replacement. And more breaking news this noon into the newsroom. Atlanta police now giving the all clear at Hartsville Jackson International Airport. After crews learned of a suspicious package in the South Terminal, there was a partial evacuation after K-9s alerted crews to the bag they thought was suspicious. And fortunately, it was not. This comes during a busy holiday weekend at the airport. The south end of the airport was closed for a brief time. Atlanta police are trying to piece together what happened to a man who was found shot to death inside of a car. This happened at the Donnelly apartment homes in Southwest Atlanta. 11 Alive's Karis Belger has been on that scene following us this for us since this morning. Karis, what do we know right now? So I've been here talking to people who live in this community, not just in the building behind me where the car was found, but also in the neighboring buildings. They all say this is something shocking and they never expected it. But I'm going to step out. I'm going to show you something. If you can look down the street there, there's a part of a gate that's bent over and there's a broken tree. That is where the car was that police found earlier this morning, and that's where they were concentrating their efforts during the investigation. And if you take a look at this footage from earlier in the day, it shows police working on that crime scene and the APD homicide commission commander told us they got the call around 430 this morning and when they got there they found a body with a gunshot wound inside. Police have not been able to identify who that person is, but we are told it was a male in his 30s. And here's something else. Police believe there was a passenger inside of the car. That person was gone when the cops got here. So right now they're relying on security footage and whatever evidence they were able to find at the scene to try and piece this together. But for the people who do live in this community, all of this is coming as a shock. Nothing like that really goes. I've been over here a couple of years, and this is completely out the norm to me. Uh, we're a close, tight-knit community over here, so like I said, I don't even recognize that car. Like, so I don't even think it's nobody. It'll be it's something for me to see. This is
investigation is still in the very early stages. In addition to the evidence police were able to collect earlier, I understand they're also trying to piece together any information they got from neighbors and witnesses early this morning so they could try and get a sense of what may have happened. Of course, as I mentioned, looking for a possible passenger who was in that car as well. All right, Karis, thank you. The attorneys for a man shot and paralyzed by East Point police officers in 2018 are releasing video of the shooting they say has never been seen by the public until now. Leading up to the shooting, Devin Nolly was being chased by the officers in his car on I-285 until they used that pit maneuver right there to get him to stop. Nolly's attorney says dash cam video shows the officers start to shoot him seven seconds after the crash. As he was running away into the wooded area, you see that officer open fire right there near the interstate. And at that point in time, he had been shot twice in the back, one specifically in his upper mid back, one specifically in his gluteal area, and two to the back of his thigh. These are all back to front. And at no point in time was Devin ever armed. And at this point, Mr. Nolly is a quadriplegic, and this should not have happened. The former East Point officers face aggravated assault charges in the case after being indicted by a grand jury just a week ago. An attorney for one of the officers says their use of force was justified. Nolly is also suing for $30 million. A man wrongfully accused of shooting an officer is out of jail and looking for an apology. Arterio Crumbly spoke exclusively with 11 Alive's Hope Ford hours before he plans to talk with reporters today. Clayton County police arrested him after they say multiple witnesses wrongfully identified him as a suspect in a robbery and shooting. He was locked up for six weeks. Police are now looking for a new suspect, this person, Charles Payne. My girl just showed me the picture of him. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm from the neighborhood, but how y'all getting me mixed up with him? I want an apology and I'm going to sue them. Crumbly says he plans to head to the police department today to get his phone. Well, enjoy the sunny skies because we got some changes coming for the Easter weekend. Chesley, it is beautiful today. It is beautiful out there. Take a look at this. Yeah. Yeah. I figure I'd tease you a little bit. Take it in. <laughs> St. Augustine Beach down in Florida. Uh, folks are out there. Can you believe that? Word has to be cool. It has to be just a little too, maybe for me, maybe for me, but they're out there. They're on the beach and everything. Perhaps you're heading down into Florida. This is just south of uh, Jacksonville. So folks are out and about. There's plenty of blue sky there. Look at that. Right in there is where that beach is, but even along our beaches, looking pretty good as well. Right on into Charleston, just north of Charleston. I was checking out the beaches there. Nobody out right now. I was looking at that camera there as well. Nobody out there. Maybe the water is just too cool for them. But notice uh, upstream, not a whole lot going on. We don't even have any clouds over us. So if you're sticking around here, you know, make your own beach in your head, you know. It's going to be nice, at least for today, but changes are coming our way. Rain, yeah, it's moving in just in time for the weekend. Right now, temperatures are in the upper 60s, even got 70 degrees right now in Atlanta. You're right at 70 there, 71 Peachtree City. You're looking at uh, 71 in LaGrange, 70 also in Thomaston, Edenton at 68, 65 up toward Clayton and Blairsville at the current tower, so a little bit cooler up there. We'll be a touch breezy through the afternoon. Our winds out of the east right now, anywhere about 10 to 12 miles per hour or so. Uh, 77 will be our afternoon high temperature again on the most Mostly sunny skies, but mighty, mighty nice. 74 degrees by 7 tonight. Uh, looking at the sunshine continuing, but the clouds will fill in. I'm thinking right after the sun sets, we'll start to see the clouds beginning to fill into the area. Mostly cloudy, <coughs> excuse me, mostly cloudy skies early on Saturday morning, but the rain will be coming our way, uh, especially early on Saturday. Some heavy rain, possibly some thunderstorms as well. We'll catch a break by the afternoon, and then we'll see another batch moving in as we head into Sunday. We're going to break that down for you in the full forecast coming up. Aisha, back to you. Supply chain shortages are creating a crisis situation in Georgia, according to Governor Brian Kemp. He signed an emergency declaration to try and fix some issues and maybe bring down prices on gas and groceries for us at home. The executive order focuses mainly on gas and the trucking industry. It outlaws price gouging for fuel and suspends any rule that limit the hours truck drivers are able to work so they can keep moving those goods. However, it does say truck drivers should not work while sick or tired and orders drivers to be given 10 consecutive hours off before they go back to work. The state of emergency goes into effect this Saturday and will expire in 30 days unless the governor extends the order. A new report out this week finds inflation jumped to highs we haven't seen in 40 years. Are these costs here to stay? You ask, we verify. 
A viewer wants to know if we'll be feeling the impact of inflation for the rest of the year. I'm hopeful. I think things are going to change around for better. For the next year, I'll sink it down. Well, let's verify. Our sources are Tom Smith, economic professor at Emory University, and the Federal Reserve Chairman, Jerome Powell. Inflation, in a nutshell, is a continued increase in the price of goods and services with a decrease of purchasing <laughs> power. Right now, the average price we pay for almost everything is at a 40-year high. Gross. The rate of prices rising is ballooned to more than 8%. It's been hard to make the money that I used to make. That's because more people are now demanding those goods and services, which drives up the cost. But your income stays about the same, which means you're not getting as much bang for your buck. We're arguing about having to spend too much money. It, it is what it is. You just got to spend it. You don't go out to eat as much. Looking at your economic crystal ball, where are we headed with all of this? Inflation. Inflation. Professor Tom Smith at Emory University says he's very hopeful. Inflation will get under control in the coming months. He believes the Federal Reserve Board is making the right moves, such as increasing interest rates on certain loans, to name a few, to get us from more than 8% right now to where we need to be at about 2%. We understand that high inflation imposes significant hardship. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell believes believes that we will see inflation deflate this year. Like most forecasters, we continue to expect inflation to decline over the course of the year. I have a lot of trust in that. The professor is optimistic. I am encouraged that our Federal Reserve Board is engaging in policies that make sense. This is what they've trained their entire lives to do, to make sure that our economy is going to be well taken care of. Going forward. We are where Atlanta speaks, and your neighbors are chiming in. I'm not going to worry. At the end of the day, you know, I know that it's going to be okay. So we can verify, according to the Federal Reserve Board Chairman and Professor Smith, this high inflation is here for now, but steps are being taken to bring it down by the end of the year. If you hear something or see something online you want us to verify, send us an email. You can also text verify to the number you see right there on your screen. Today marks 75 years since Jackie Robinson broke Major League Baseball's color barrier by playing in a game for the Brooklyn Dodgers. The Braves will join all Major League teams today by wearing the number 42 on their jerseys in honor of Robinson's number. The Braves will also host a celebration at the Jackie Robinson Boys and Girls Club in Cairo, where Robinson was born. The World Series trophy will be there too. His vision of telling the stories of Atlanta's homeless has captured hearts on social media. Next, how the 22-year-old is using his platform to give back. A lot of parents are burying their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A different cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. 11 Alive Morning News we began with breaking news this morning. is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. News happens fast. Stream it faster. 11 Alive News is now on Roku. Stream live newscast. We begin tonight with breaking news. And watch on demand. We are tracking severe storms. 11 Alive News, stream now on Roku. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify, where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. 
a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that he was love every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say. We see people getting famous on social media for all kinds of things like comedy, singing, doing some TikTok dances. But 22 year old Justin Keefe has become a hit online for telling the stories of Atlanta's homeless. Now with more than a million followers, his full time job is giving them a voice and in some cases a new life. Are you homeless by chance? Yeah. How long you been homeless? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. At 22 years old, Justin Keith wakes up every day with a mission, giving a voice to Atlanta's homeless. It's because driving by the homeless, you'll look at them and be like, I wonder what happened or how did they get here? So Justin uses his social media platforms under the name Glow Jays to interview homeless people. So what brought you to Atlanta? He offers money, a meal, and an ear to listen. Mr. Warren is one of those willing to talk. My family was here. I was going to visit. I came out of prison. Mr. Warren's daughter was killed a week after he arrived in Atlanta. Unable to cope with grief, Mr. Warren was in a mental health crisis when he met Justin. He says no one ever stopped to show they cared. So it's only been four months since your first video. How has life changed for you? It's honestly changed my life in a lot of different ways. I mean, first getting to help people. I love helping people. I've always been a, a giver. So now being able to really give to people full time is just like, it, it's crazy. In the mind. Inspired by his impact, Glow Jays oh, and his photographer Oz started posting more, growing to more than a million followers between Instagram and TikTok. He was even able to quit his job. So I get a lot of brand deals now, like brands actually pay me to wear their clothing. I have my view revenue, of course. More money and more time to give. After hearing Mr. Warren's story, he spent the next month helping him go from homeless to housed. As y'all can see behind me, it looks like I'm at an apartment complex, don't it? What that mean? You got a crib, not us. Man, that means I can take a hot shower, warm bed, a new beginning. Thanks to you, thanks to my viewers, man, and thanks to God. And Justin has started a nonprofit under the Glow Jays brand. He says he wants to take his projects to the next level by turning his videos into a documentary. Can't wait to see what he does, Chesley. Oh, he's going to do it all. He, that's, that's great. It's just great news right there. Take a look at this behind me. This is a Disto Beach up in South Carolina. A little small town, a little small island north of Hilton Head. Nobody out there. Look at that. But, you know, by tomorrow that's going to change. Or maybe even by this afternoon that will start to change a little bit. Uh, I did see one little kid running along. Thought he would run by my camera while I had it up. Hey, there's a bird. <laughs> beautiful if you plan on going to the beaches, uh, but changes are coming our way. It's beautiful around here. We have the sunshine in place, mostly sunny skies, some high thin clouds around. That's it. That's it. Clouds will fill in later on tonight, and we'll get a chance for rain as we head into the weekend, unfortunately. So today, just a beautiful day. We're giddy about it. A good, good Friday. Temperatures are heating up into the upper 60s, even some 70s out there. Let's go on down in here and take a look. Stockbridge currently at 63, along with Forest Park over in Clayton County. 68 down Locust Grove, 70 in Conyers. 71, Peachtree City. Got Chattahoochee Hills at 68 in South Fulton County. Hiram in Dallas and in, in uh, Paulding County, you're looking at uh, 67 Dallas at 70, 66 Powder Springs and Mapleton, 70 in Temple, 70 in downtown Atlanta, 69 degrees in East Point, Camelton, you, you're at uh, 60, uh, 70 degrees as well, 69 at the Fulton County Airport, so knocking on the 70 degree door like Roswell. All right, so um, fine for this afternoon, right? You may have started out with that light sweater or a track jacket. Go ahead and take that off. You don't need it. Temperatures will be heating up into the upper 70s today. A little easterly flow will change or shift to more southeasterly as we head through the afternoon. Winds will be a bit breezy as well, but it'll make it feel nice, right? Comfortable, especially in the shade. You notice the clouds building in back off to the west of us. We've got a system hasn't made it into the map yet, but it will start to bring uh, uh, the possibility for a few isolated severe thunderstorms. We have a slight risk, which has now been expanded. You can see now it includes well just to the east of Oklahoma City, but it also 
includes Memphis. Earlier this morning, this image just included the northwestern corner of Arkansas, but now has been expanded a little further to the east. So the Memphis area now under that slight risk for severe weather. That's a level two out of a possible five. You can see the level one threat extends into northwestern parts of Alabama, which now includes Birmingham as well. We'll have to watch this as those storms continue to track through the overnight going into our state by the early morning. So you just see us under light green shade for tomorrow. That shifts a little bit further down to the south. South of I-20 is where you find that marginal risk, that level one threat. Isolated severe thunderstorms are possible down toward the Macon area and some of our southernmost county. So we'll watch that. The light green shade just means general, a general threat for thunderstorms. And we'll have that around again early on Saturday. So if you have no plans to wake up early, you may be awakened by some of that heavy rainfall that will be out there and maybe a couple claps of thunder as well. Here's the forecast track model. You can follow along with the time right there at the top of the screen. Shows the fair skies for the rest of the afternoon. Once we get to 9 o'clock, notice how the clouds start filling in here. So after the sun sets is when we'll see that. Early morning, here comes that rain. Some heavy showers coming down. A few thunderstorms storms will be embedded in uh, a few of these. The winds could be a bit gusty in a few of these thunderstorms as well. We'll be watching to see if it reaches the severe weather, uh, severe thunderstorm criteria, meaning winds getting up to about 60 miles per hour. That will roll into the forecast area, or at least in the metro, by 8, 9 o'clock. And then we'll watch it push down to the south after 10, 11 o'clock. We'll have a few isolated showers left over, but certainly the clouds will hang on for much of the day. So it's not going to be the prettiest of days even after the rain is gone. So if you have plans on Saturday, you know, a few Easter egg hunts, maybe even an Easter picnic, right? It's not going to be the prettiest of days. We don't have much in the way of sunshine. Those clouds will only break down after the sun sets. So through the overnight, we'll see skies clearing out. We'll have a uh, sunshine and around for early Easter Sunday morning services and then the clouds fill in by the afternoon. Then here comes the rain with scattered thunderstorms possibly uh, as we head into the evening on Sunday. 73 degrees will be the high temperature and then the rain continues on Monday, but we'll dry it up for the rest of the work week with 10s and 11s on the wisometer. Aisha. Giving birth can be one of the most joyous moments of a parent's life, but childbirth for some black women can be deadly. Just ahead, a mother recounts her traumatic experience. 11 Alive News Verify. It's where you see viral claims put under the microscope. This Facebook post is all over the internet, but is it true? Where the fight against bad information begins with your good question. Laura from Marietta asks, can this program... And where the experts read between the lies. The fine print shows this isn't real. 11 Alive News Verify, where you know what's fact and what's fiction. Watch weekdays at 5, 6, and 11 p.m. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. He is a character in his own self. I mean, he's just my miracle child. And I treated him like he was a miracle and that he was loved every single day. I can remember that day like it was yesterday. How could this happen? A lot of parents are bearing their children. People always say black people don't do that. Yes, here's a picture. A Different Cry, now streaming on Roku and Fire TV. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has been Did you know black women are three times more likely to die from complications linked to childbirth? For the women who suffer, this is way more than just a number. I spoke to one woman who is looking back on her nightmare delivery room experience while getting ready to welcome baby number four. As a black woman, what was your labor and delivery experience? Uh, it was very traumatic. It was very traumatic for me. I think because I didn't know how to advocate for myself. And so I was expecting those who were, you know, the, the medical professionals to do the right thing. And um, to me, that didn't happen. I went through the laboring process for about five hours, contractions nonstop. And then I also had the huge blood clot that I passed and the doctor never came in to check on me to see what's going on. And then finally, when I was ready to deliver, um, everybody rushed in. Um, I was able to successfully have my son. And then after that, I just started seeing TV static, like literally 
everything was fading to black. That evening, I should have had a blood transfusion formed, and not until the next morning did the doctor say, oh, you know, let's go ahead and get this done, and she forgot to sign the paperwork. So I waited 12 hours to get a blood transfusion, and therefore I couldn't hold my child. My husband had to do the diaper changes. I couldn't bathe myself. Did you ever get any answers? No, the doctor who um, delivered my baby never came to see me that evening afterwards. Did you switch to a black OBGYN? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. We um, have more of a bond with each other. I feel like I can, you know, talk to her about anything that's going on with myself and that she's actually listening to me and that she knows exactly what kind of care that I need as a black woman, you know, whether or not I need to take a baby aspirin, you know, because of preeclampsia, because we're more prone to high blood pressure. Well, how far along are you this time? I am 17 weeks and this was a surprise. I'm going to be 42 when this baby's born. <laughs> so, wow. Yes. Well, we wish you the best of luck on baby surprise number four. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. We're wrapping up Black Maternal Health Week, but 11 Alive continues to be committed to shining a spotlight on the racial disparities in childbirth and how to make it better. On 11alive.com slash Mothers Matter, you can watch our entire docu-series and find resources. Mic check, one, two, three, one, two, three. Mic check, check, one, two, three. Today is Friday, tomorrow's Saturday. Day after that is Sunday. And then the weekend's over. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I remember you were down there every day. Anybody need a final audio check? I am here to announce my candidacy for nothing. I don't know. What? Yeah. It's so good not to be back with y'all. Hey, anybody covering any campaign events this weekend? Doug? Richard? I haven't even looked. Who's got a breakfast or anything tomorrow? You're staying home this weekend? I went to Walton County GOP this week. That was interesting. Oh, no. Oh, no. You know, I was doing good. Who did you get in a Twitter spat with, George? What? Who did you get in a Twitter spat with that was reading yesterday? I was like, oh, this is so much fun. But it was somebody yesterday. I don't know why I was reading it. I was like completely glued to it. Yes. Was it yesterday or day before? You were in a Twitter spat with somebody yesterday. I just remember it was funny. Huh? Okay.
Oh, they'll let anybody in here, won't they? <laughs> How are you, brother? all of them. Come on. Come on. Around. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, we all know what we're here for, and that is for me to thank Chief Rodney Bryant for a full career of service uh, to Atlanta and to this Atlanta Police Department. Um, Chief Bryant has answered the call uh, for our city time and time again uh, throughout his career in difficult times in our city. And so I am grateful, uh, and I was grateful, and I still am grateful to Chief uh, that through my first 100 days, he agreed to stay on uh, to be the chief of this great department and has been instrumental and helpful along the way. And so I wanted to join him today in person with all of you, uh, with members of this great uh, police department, uh, with rank and file, to let you hear directly from me uh, how appreciative I am achieve service to our community. Uh, Atlanta is blessed to have had a dedicated, uh, committed member of this police force uh, to serve our people for so many years. And as we go through this uh, transition process, I'll be looking for a new chief that sh also shares in our vision of moving Atlanta forward and making sure that this city is safe for all of its residents and all of the visitors to the city. I also look forward to a chief who will respect and also advocate for the needs of these dedicated police officers uh, and leaders in this force. Mm -hmm. And so I am uh, standing here today with a great committed public servant, a great uh, man of the people of the city of Atlanta, uh, a, a decorated uh, leader in our city, a uh, police officer all the way up to the rank of chief someone who the whole police community around Atlanta, the metro region, all of the various um, um, law enforcement agencies respect and know well this, this chief. I'm standing here today to you know, just celebrate him and um, also congratulate him on his forthcoming retirement. Chief Bryan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank Mayor Andre Dickens for the opportunity to work throughout this transition. Uh, I, I told a few people early on that uh, through his candidacy, he was one, he was the, one of the few, if not the only candidate uh, that continued to call and check 
on how police services were being conducted, were the issues that the city were facing uh, true, and what could he do even before he took that seat. And so it was truly my honor uh, to be able to work even through this. One of the things that I, was, I have always stated to the team is that I was never going to be a long-term chief as I had retired and, and that's where I uh, truly enjoy it. But it has truly been uh, my honor to lead at the highest level the men and women of this uh, very dedicated police department. Uh, when I came on in 2020, we were, one, we were in the most challenging of times, not as just as a department, but as a city and a nation. And the men and women of this department were very committed and dedicated. Uh, and work through those challenges with me. You cannot lead if people aren't willing to follow. And these men and women continue to follow. We're very committed to making sure that our city remains safe. As we continue to struggle with the violent crime in our city, in almost every other category, crime is down. Uh, that was one of the challenges that we, I received from this mayor is that we get crime down, and I think that we've delivered on that. Additionally, he asked that we increase our recruitment and our recruitment numbers uh, continue to improve. And so I think that we, as I leave and transition into my next phase, that I am leaving this department in the strong, capable hands of executive leaders, as well as people who are, are will, truly committed to this city. And so I think that it is the right time uh, for me to transition the mayor has a very aggressive plan for this city. Uh, he, when he speaks even now, he speaks in the term of eight years, meaning that he's truly committed to what he does for this city. And so when a, when a leader lays out a strategy for that long, he should have a team that's just as committed. Uh, and it is clear, uh, I wanted to be clear, that uh, I'll support this mayor as long as I can and I'm capable but it won't be in the position as chief for the next eight years. And so I think that it's the right time for him to look uh, for leadership and to continue to move uh, his platform and his strategies for this city forward. So thank you so much for this opportunity, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Let's give Chief a round of applause. Thank you, Chief. So over this time, there's going to be a lot of um, celebrations and transitions, but um, I wanted to applaud him today as we continue to applaud him throughout this transition period. So now, uh, take questions. Sure. George? Uh, Chief, I'm sorry. Go no, no, go ahead. <laughs> when you took over, like, as you say, like the city was in a moment of crisis, what I'm curious about is how you, you believe that the role of a police chief has changed that moment in June in 2020 to today. Like, what have you had to do differently as a leader then compared to your leadership responsibilities and focus today? Wow, that's a great question. Uh, one is uh, clearly recognize that the bond that we continue to work with our community and our department, as much as we worked on it before those incidents of 2020, it recognized that we have to work even harder to, to strengthen those uh, relationships. But COVID threw us a, a curve that no one had anticipated, that not only did you, would we have to build those uh, coalitions in a time that we couldn't get together. And so it gave me the ability to recognize that we had to use every technique, every level of technology to strengthen the relationship, both internally and externally. You have to understand that the men and women of the police departments, not just in Atlanta, but nationwide, were going through a very uh, uh, moral, uh, mora moral uh, downgrade. And we had to strengthen that. And so you have to rely on your leadership uh, to make sure that your messages get out. You have to continue to support your mayor. Uh, even when you don't align, uh, you have to support your mayor uh, and so that's what it was. It was that you, and, and I had to love rely, as the mayor talked about uh, where we were with our collaborations. One of the things that I, I immediately had to do is build relationships back with our federal and local and state partners uh, to be able to move our city forward. Mayor, I wanted to ask you about the process of picking that police chief. 
Is it a city process? Do you bring in a firm? What questions specifically will you do? Will you be interviewing some of these candidates? And for example, you may ask that person. Wow, you asked a lot of questions in one. That's <laughs> <laughs> my job. So, <laughs> so uh, yes, I will be a part of the interview process for sure. Um, two, uh, that process will be national. Um, we're going to go on a national search, and I think that gives us a lot of uh, insight into where you know police departments are across the nation. But I have a hint and a suspicion that this person, uh, that the local leadership, uh, local law enforcement will uh, really have um, a, a lot of candidates that are, uh, you know, come to the top uh, because we have a lot of great people that are from this police department as well as uh, adjacent or local uh, jurisdictions around us that have a Metro Atlanta understanding. So while national in scope, um, there are some um, you know, local talent that, that, that are definitely gonna be uh, rising up to the top. Um, and then your question about the overall process. So I plan to start with getting input from the community and then also input from the rank and file. So I plan to have some listening sessions uh, some input um, uh, opportunities, whether those are, some of them are going to be digital, meaning surveys and questions that you have about what would you like to see in a police chief, what would you like to see in police uh, leadership and in the force, um, but also uh, some where we're going to be doing town halls in various mm -hmm. quadrants of the city to kind of just talk to citizens, have them share their ideals about what they'd like to see in a police chief. Uh, we'll get all that input, make sure we take that into consideration as we go down the path of uh, selecting a new chief. Mayor Newman, we thought that their Chief Bryant's resignation has been effective in June. Presumably, if you don't hire a new chief by then, you'll have to appoint an interim chief um, or something like that. Um, do you worry about the stability of the department going into summer uh, given the potential flux there? Actually, your question answers it because the way that we're doing this is to make sure we have an orderly transition. Um, Chief is retiring, and uh, that's gonna happen in June. So between now and June, we'll get this opportunity to start this process of getting uh, information out to the public, start our input gathering process. And over time, we will begin the process of uh, selecting an interim. Um, I don't believe by any stretch that we'll have a, 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 the whole process uh, filled out by the time chief retires, so there will be some overlap where we'll go to an interim state before we select our final chief. But this is all about being prepared uh, for, uh, have our summers, uh, summer worked out, because we don't want to go into summer without, you know, the chief and some kind of leadership for us to transition orderly. And so all of this has been done thoughtfully to make sure we're prepared. Can I follow just briefly, do you, uh, did you ask the chief to stay on a little longer? I'm sorry, what did you say? Did you ask him to stay on a little longer? So, that, so you wouldn't maybe have to plan No, Chief and I actually came to this conclusion and this decision together. Um, timing lined up just, uh, just right. So uh, we asked each other for it, exactly what you're hearing us talk about today. Well, what's next? Yeah, just, just real quick, just three days ago we were talking with you about we celebrated the 100 days. You said you were going to look at the data in terms of the contract you had with the police chief. Um, what you found in that data was it promising? Um, did it sort of lend, it, lend its hand to this announcement today? Yeah, so um, I have been uh, working with uh, Chief Bryant every single morning. We actually talk at 8 or 8.30 each morning. So I get an understanding of what happened overnight putting in place uh, each day. I get to share my input of some of the things I've heard that might uh, cause us room for, uh, you know, some changes based on the weekend things or some, um, some issues. So we've had a lot of communication, but we also have a lot of data that's coming out of uh, crime stats, et cetera. So there are things that I'm encouraged by. Um, there has been a reduction in a number of these property crimes. These men and women have really been doing an extreme Extreme good job this year at cutting down a lot of this crime and a lot of things that you don't get to see, I get to see that, that shows me that they are out there working, arrests are up uh, for these crimes. And so that gives me, uh, gave me a lot of good information that I was encouraged by, meaning that the morale is up. These individuals are going out there, putting their lives on the line, doing fantastic work. But there are some areas that I still see that we need improvement in. 
And in those areas, we're going to continue to work hard on them. Uh, the men and women of this uh, police department are already well aware of what those issues are. Uh, homicides are just too high for my uh, for any of us, right? We, we have uh, homicides and rapes are uh, higher than we want them to be. And so we're going to continue to focus on that. Not to say that the, the solution to homicides are all in the hands of the police force. So that's why we have our nightlife division. That's why we are uh, working on our anti-violence and our uh, community response uh, solutions, but also um, being very forthright and um, strong at our gangs, our guns, illegal guns, trafficking, as well as all those individuals that are out there doing robberies and, and um, and aggravated assaults that come as a result of that. So in short, there's some things I'm encouraged by, but then there are some things I know we need to improve and we're gonna go out there and get it done. Well, what I'm looking for is for uh, the police force to continue to uh, live up to protect and serve, um, to continue to protect the citizens of Atlanta, the visitors of Atlanta, but to serve them. That community-based policing has to happen, um, and they're doing it. Uh, we have to continue to increase the number of men and women on our force, which is uh, why we're aggressively going after this goal of 250 for this year, and we've been doing that. So uh, the chief has to be the chief recruiter in charge as well as chief. Um, I'll be the chief chief recruiter in charge, making sure people want to come. But uh, the chief has to know how to get out there and recruit so that we can uh, reduce some of the pressures that are on uh, the individuals that we see right here because they're running around doing a lot of work and uh, for us to be able to do the community policing as well as the just normal patrols you need more 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 bodies more people and so being a good recruiter being someone who can actually help us implement uh, community-based strategies um, mm -hmm. and also uh, to be um, have a good ear to the street uh, so that we can get ahead of crime, uh, to be more preventative in nature, working with our uh, uh, nuisance apartment complexes, our uh, cl clubs and these areas where we know violence occurs. Uh, so I guess I'm looking for a chief that knows Atlanta, um, that loves Atlanta, that understands the police force that's here, but also is ready to bring in I any new innovative solutions to get ahead of crime and to get out there and do this 21st uh, century policing that we want to do, which is... Um, related to uh, you know, crime, uh, community-based policing and crime prevention. Last question, what's next? A <laughs> uh, much needed vacation. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, um, you recognize when it's time, to be honest with you. Uh, I took off for vacation this week and I've been in this uniform every single day this week. Uh, and so it's a very demanding job, but, and it's just time for a true vacation. And so that's what I'll do. Uh, and I, I, as, as I stated earlier, I'm very committed to the city, very committed to this police department. I will always uh, be very supportive and behind the scenes assisting as needed. Uh, as, as the question was asked earlier about the transition uh, or what level, what happens with this uh, interim chief, uh, whoever's in, in this seat, uh, they will have my full support and, and, and cooperation uh, because I believe that you, uh, I believe in this city, I believe in this department, I believe in this mayor and this administration. Uh, so there will always be some level of service to this city and this department from me. Thank you. Thank you. He tried to get away this week, but vacation is here this week. <laughs>